Hello, I'm Merit Jano, Dean of the School of International and Public Affairs, and I'm very pleased to be joining you, even virtually, for your forum examining the theme, Embracing Uncertainty and Refining the Future. You are looking at a crucial set of issues for the global economy, and I want to start by congratulating the organizers and students who are part of this effort. I expect that all of us gathered here today believe deeply in the role that universities play as institutions with a mandate to create new knowledge, debate the issues of the moment, and engage with the greatest challenges facing our world. We are living through a moment of incredible volatility, uncertainty, and arrest with political and economic problems that can seem overwhelming and intractable. At times like these, it is often to universities that we look to help put things into context, to make sense of what's going on, to engage diverse perspectives and offer meaningful solutions. I expect that that is what everyone participating in this conference has assembled here to do. We're also here because we understand the importance of building and sustaining intellectual ties between the United States and China, and indeed the world. Columbia University and SIPA have long recognized the power and the payoff of investing in broadening our collective understanding of each other's countries and cultures and our systems and addressing shared challenges and concerns. Columbia has a long and proud history of engagement with China. The founding of the Chinese Studies Program occurred in 1901, and during the Chinese educational mission of the 19th century, the Qing Dynasty sent students to Columbia University. Our CV Star East Asian Library is one of the major collections in North America. From early research and teaching in language, literature, history, and religion, sciences, and social sciences, to the numerous scholars who regularly collaborate with Chinese universities across fields like economics, finance, social sciences, humanities, and engineering, and of course our Columbia Global Center in Beijing, Columbia and SIPA's ties with China are deep and rich. SIPA, for its part, is the most global school of public policy in the world. We offer a rigorous analytical environment that considers major challenges facing the world from an interdisciplinary set of perspectives. SIPA also has history of deep intellectual engagement with China, reflected in ongoing research and collaboration with researchers, policymakers, and business leaders in China on a broad set of policy issues. We have seen a steady rise over the last decade in students from China, now composing about 20% of our graduate student body. And we have a remarkable Chinese alumni community. In a word, we are proud of the Columbia students, faculty, and alumni from China whose experiences and rich expertise and talent add vitality to our classrooms, our labs, and our broader university community. I hope and trust that these relations will deepen in the years ahead. Turning to the subject of your conference, as you are considering global trends, I invite you to consider at least four dimensions. First, you may wish to consider how economic prospects have diverged across countries in recent months. The IMF and others are projecting the global economy to grow by some 6% in 2021, with improvements occurring for advanced economies, particularly the United States, due in part to fiscal support and improving health metrics, as we have seen marked improvements with the vaccine rollout and improved economic activity. A number of countries can look forward to further normalization of activity, even as other nations still face rising COVID infections and very fragile economies. Second, I invite you to consider the lessons from the period we have been going through on how interconnected the world is, whether we like it or not, and what this means. 
Third, consider not only the risks and the weaknesses in the global economy, but also the opportunities that lie ahead, the remarkable contributions of science, the potential of the digital transformations we are witnessing to support financial inclusion and economic growth. And finally, please consider developments between the United States and China and within these two great nations, as it will matter enormously. U.S.-China relations are in one of the more difficult periods that I have seen in my professional lifetime. There is much talk about economic decoupling. While I think that is neither feasible without major disruptions nor desirable, it is important to understand the sources of tension that have triggered those concerns and consider what can be done about it. I know that all of you will be analysts and drivers of positive change. I wish you a very successful conference and thoughtful engagement on some of the most important questions of our time. My best wishes to you all.